Third and final opinion, lower eyelid blepharoplasty with or without fat transfer. Need a tiebreaker. One surgeon recommended lower eyelid blepharoplasty with fat transfer to avoid hollowed eyes. The other surgeon was against a fat transfer and suggested filler as an option. I'm concerned that if I have lower eyelid blepharoplasty without the fat transfer, I'll have hollow looking eyes requiring regular filler. Or if I have the lower eyelid blepharoplasty with the fat transfer, I look overfilled or have lumps. Thank you for your question. You submitted a single photo of your eyes in close up and you state you've had two consultations about undergoing lower eyelid blepharoplasty. One surgeon recommended lower eyelid blepharoplasty with fat grafting so that you can address potential hollowing and the other surgeon recommended lower eyelid blepharoplasty with fillers afterwards to address the hollowing if it is necessary and so and you're torn between the making the choice of whether to go for the risk of having fat grafting but you're concerned about lumps and other potential issues and then you're not exactly excited about needing fillers. Well, I can certainly share with you how I counsel my patients with exactly the same scenario. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and helping people with under eye aesthetics including blepharoplasty, fillers, and other modalities, lasers, etc., is a big part of what we do every day in our practice. So as far as my position on the concerns about under eye hollow after eyelid surgery, it's important to first be able to try to anticipate and recognize what are the areas that are potentially at risk of looking hollow after surgery. You see, when people do research about eyelid surgery, they're all often afraid of looking too hollow. But how I explain it is essentially the style and approach of which I do the surgery, I'm reducing the fat pockets so that it would look as if you never had the bags to begin with. And if you could imagine that, well then you would probably not necessarily choose to have a surgical procedure to fill the hollows given what the modern choices are now. In addition, it's important to distinguish the relative hollowing from in, in terms of the spaces that are, that are relevant to creating the perception of hollow. And what does that mean? Well, as we get older, we lose bone, we lose fat, and it creates a diminishing of the structure of, around, of the facial uh, architecture. And so when I look at a person's eyes, I really also look at their eyes and cheeks and how it relates to the whole face. So one area that is often overlooked is actually the cheekbones and the under the submalar space where there's opportunity perhaps intraoperatively to add volume or postoperatively. Now, as far as the pros and cons of fat grafting versus filler, it's fairly straightforward from my perspective. As a surgeon, I have used, I have done fat grafting, and I still will do fat grafting. But I have, I can tell you as a referral specialist, and of course I'm going to have a bit of a skewed view, I have dealt with a lot of complications of fat grafting. Fat grafting can cause lumps, create bumps and irregularities, and the surgery to address these issues is far more complicated and involved than, than using fillers. Fillers are also, if you're working with a hyaluronic acid filler, are essentially reversible. The other thing that I think is very important to understand is recovery. Patients who have had eyelid surgery done elsewhere, very often you have to also differentiate the type of blepharoplasty. A lot of times these, this combination of lower eyelid surgery with fat grafting is popular amongst uh, some general plastic surgeons. And what they'll do is they'll make an incision from the outside and um, approach the fat pockets from the outside, remove some skin, suture, and then 
place, do fat grafting into that same space. These patients tend to look very swollen, very bruised after one week, and tend to have lingering swelling and bruising for weeks beyond that. And in the modern world, it is very, it is usually the desire of most people, regardless of their type of work they do, they need to get back to work pretty quickly. I generally do my procedures, lower eyelid blepharoplasty, from a transconjunctival approach that's done from the inside of the eyelid. And there are often times when patients come back to us after one week and they have no bruising. So when it comes to expediency, I would say that the blepharoplasty alone, and from a transconjunctival approach, is probably the most likely to have the quickest recovery, especially the way we do it in our practice, which I feel is optimal, and that's local anesthesia with light sedation. So there's no general anesthesia and no recovery from general anesthesia. And we do this in our own, in our own facilities certified by the Joint Commission. When it comes to this the ongoing maintenance um, issue, uh, for most patients, I would say that who, who pursue aesthetic procedures, they are obviously inclined to be concerned about their appearance. And not everything is a surgical procedure that can be can last for the rest of their lives. Essentially, maintenance I look at is like exercise and other things that you apply time and, and effort towards. And so if you are interested in maintaining the most optimal look for yourself, and basically the way I, 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 exp I express it to my patients is, if you want to try to match the way you feel on the inside with the way you look on the outside, well, then maintenance is important. Now, that could mean getting injectable fillers in the cheeks, um, in the chin, in other areas, doing some uh, non-ablative laser, doing some facials, as well as doing injectables like uh, Restylane or other, or other hyaluronic acid fillers in the tear trough on a semi-regular basis. But I would, I would say that in, from my perspective, and again, practicing in New York and having patients who come from all over the world, I would say that predictability is so critically important and there is very little tolerance for pro, a protracted healing time as well as unpredictability when it comes to healing. There is really very little forgiveness in that respect. So I would, I would err on the side of being conservative and I would say that, or I would say, I should say, I would lean towards the side of being conservative because frankly, fat grafting in, although techniques have improved, technology has improved, but predictability has essentially remained unchanged. 30 to 70 percent of fat can be, can be absorbed and some of that fat can result in lumps and irregularities and scarring and that is, a, that is, not, a, that is not an outcome that is easy to manage. So again, I would say that in situations like yourself, I would generally say we should consider doing just a transconjunctival blepharoplasty. If we're going to do fillers during surgery, we might think about fillers in the cheek area, but again, that would be more of a, a consultation dependent um, evaluation with multiple angles in the face. And then after three, six months, determine whether there's opportunity to enhance the tear trough. And one last thought is that fillers in the tear trough tend to last. And so even though we'll say that it'll last maybe up to six months based on the, the manufacturer's guidelines as to expected longevity, there are patients who have had tear trough filler for years. And it, the concept is that there probably is some encapsulation of these fillers and they can last a little bit uh, considerably longer. So it's again about meeting, meeting with the doctor who gets this and will be there for you in ongoing follow-up. In our practice, I basically am not just a surgeon who does all these procedures, but I'm also become the primary care doctor for beauty and end up doing a lot of other things to help maintain and optimize the appearance for many years to come. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.